Dr. Fedorchek, um, I'd like to ask you first, you know, when you were you know, looking into things you could have done with your education and your, and your uh, degree and, and thinking about what you wanted to do, what, what made you this look towards science and, and dedicating your career to science and discovery? So <clears throat> I knew pretty early on that I was interested in engineering uh, in high school. I, I really enjoyed math and science both, um, particularly chemistry. And so I knew that I wanted to pursue t some type of engineering degree. Uh, I had kind of foolishly thought that chemical engineering would combine those two subjects quite well. Um, I was wrong. Uh, there's actually not a ton of chemistry in chemical engineering. And I learned that at Carnegie Mellon through an internship that I had with uh, Dow Chemical. Um, and I learned very quickly that I did not want to be a chemical engineer. Uh, and so for graduate school, I focused much more on the biological portion of, of my degree that I had gotten from CMU. Um, because I double majored in biomedical engineering, I did have some idea about what that field uh, involved. And so I, I went for my PhD in bioengineering um, and I just felt very compelled to do research. It's, it's not always, um, it can be kind of punishing at times because you get negative results or you get grants that are rejected, manuscripts that are rejected. Um, and it takes a certain personality type, I think, to kind of work in an area where the answers are not known and your day-to-day -day functions are, are not very well defined. Um, but for me, it just kind of clicked. And so getting that experience doing research in graduate school uh, was, was really a moment where I said, I think I could do this um, you know, for my career. And, and I wanted to, to have a lab of my own and to be able to define what those research questions would be for my own career. Um, and it has been, uh, even though there are ups and downs, I would say um, the overall trajectory for me has been a very positive one, very rewarding. Well, you know, um, I agree because I do know what you do, what, what you're doing in research, but um, maybe some of the folks who would be tuning into this haven't um, heard a little bit about um, specifically what you're working on. Could you describe that to us? Uh, let us know a little bit about the, the research and, and, and uh, what, what you're hoping to accomplish. Sure, sure. So my lab is called the Ophthalmic Biomaterials Lab, um, which is a very fancy way of saying that we take different materials, uh, both synthetic and naturally occurring materials, and we use them in a way to, um, to work towards technologies and solutions that uh, will help either prevent vision loss or restore vision loss. Um, and what we've kind of specialized in, what we focus on, at least for the time being, is the, uh, the modification of approved eye drop medication into a version that offers some enhancement either in safety or efficacy, convenience maybe, tolerability. Um, we take medicines that are already FDA approved in eye drops that are used for things like glaucoma um, or inflammation, uh, infection, and we will reformulate them often using those biomaterials or other tricks that we have up our sleeves in the lab. Um, we will reformulate them and you know, hope to gain, like I said, some kind of enhancement. So either making them uh, less irritating to the ocular surface, um, which we do for uh, a drug called cysteamine, or in the case of glaucoma, our goal there is to decrease the frequency of eye drop administration. So making it easier for patients to administer the medication according to the right schedule. And in glaucoma, that's actually paramount because uh, missing those drops is quite common and doing so puts you at a really tremendous risk for vision loss over the long term, and that vision loss is irreversible. And so um, just by tweaking the way that these drugs are administered, not changing the drugs themselves, we're, we're not really in the discovery game. Um, what we do is drug delivery. So we alter how the drugs are delivered, uh, and that's been our main focus. We have a couple other projects and things like ocular trauma and um, some gene therapy stuff in the works, but really uh, what, we've, what we've done the most of is taking those eye drops and, and modifying them in some way to 
to make it easier for patients to, to treat their own ocular diseases. Yeah, I, I have to say that, you know, this is exciting in, in the time I've spent learning about your work and also, you know, just knowing uh, many patients who've been dealing with um, things like glaucoma and, and any condition where you have to use drops. Um, the, the, there are, you know, compliance is a, is a problem. So um, it is very exciting to have something that would be uh, more sustainable. Um, now, I, obviously you should be proud of that and I hope, I know you are, but um, if I was to ask you what you are most proud of in terms of what you've done professionally or in your research or in, or in uh, personally, maybe even in terms of, uh, of um, of uh, your accomplishments to date, what would you what would you tell uh, people that uh, that you would say you're most proud of? So I, I'm I'm glad that you're asking me this question because if you had asked me this a couple months ago, I would be racking my brain thinking about you know some papers or some grants or even some of the patents that we have coming out of my lab, um, but the answer wouldn't really feel right. But now I have an answer that I know is the correct one, and that is. I just recently had my very first graduate student get her PhD from my lab. Um, and that was a moment that was uh, far and away, you know, my biggest accomplishment professionally because I took someone, not only was this graduate student there from the beginning. So when we turned the lights on in my lab in 2015, um, she was there, she was with me from day one uh, and she helped me unbox the equipment. We built the lab. Um, both in the figurative sense and in the literal sense together. Um, and she's been there with me this whole time uh, for five years. She graduated and the feeling of taking a student um, who was fresh out of, of college, uh, you know, 22 years old, and, and actually turning her into one of my peers. Um, she has the same degree that I do now. And wow. so she, you know, I taught her, but now we are at the same level. And I just thought that was so, um, so rewarding, but also just so powerful. And I'm so proud of her. She is now working for a tissue engineering startup in Cleveland, uh, and she's going to be great. And, um, and I'm just super proud of her accomplishments. And it was definitely the best feeling of my career so far when she graduated. That's, that's really, really, I'm glad that that's, that's something you're proud of, but it's also something that I think, you know, we, we, uh, we do here in, in, at the university that, that can never be overlooked. And, and it's great to see this in the department because that's someone who's also going to be studying or, or doing work in the future that's going to help patients, uh, you know, in, in, in the field. So that's fantastic. Yeah. So uh, you're, you're local, you're from Altoona. Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, so you, you've been in Pittsburgh most, this region most of your life. And, but what can you say now that you've been with the department for uh, a number of years and, and you've seen a lot of changes uh, in the last few years, what are the things that um, you, would, you would say are um, uh, right now exciting to you or, or you know, um, uh, that, that you see you're looking forward to that you think would be uh, be important for people to know? Well, there's a lot to be excited about. Um, I mean, obviously, right now, things are changing quite a bit for other external reasons, but there are changes afoot within the department. Um, we have lots of new researchers in the department, uh, and every time you bring someone new in, there's an opportunity for collaboration there. And I think that, you know, over the past couple years, the, the new faculty that have joined the department, we've just now reached a point where we've been able to communicate and, and kind of uh, discuss ideas together to the point where I'm starting to write grants and initiate projects with colleagues of mine that I hadn't ever known before in areas of research I had never worked in before. And that's always really exciting to challenge myself to, to take on a new research area but also to combine two different areas of expertise in a way that I hadn't thought of before. And I think that that's where some of the best research can emerge, where it's this unexpected partnership between uh, colleagues. And so the more people and the more energy that we have around the department, the more opportunities there are for those new collaborations. 
And then on top of that, you cannot overlook the fact that we're going to be moving into a new building. Um, and when that happens, those opportunities for networking and, you know, just kind of seeing someone across the hall that you're not used to seeing right now. We're, we're a bit spread out right now. Of course, right now, more spread out than ever. Um, but, you know, when we're all there together and, and it's gonna be here sooner than, you know, than it feels right now, um, that's going to be a moment where we really hit an inflection point in terms of what this department is capable of. And I think what I'm seeing now is that the foundation for that increased level of, of interdisciplinary activity and all those collaborations and all of the new research projects, that foundation is already being laid because we're anticipating that we're all gonna be in this together. Um, and so I've, I've just been able to, to interact with my colleagues in a way that really hadn't existed before. Um, and I think it's also because in my career right now, um, I've, I've opened myself up to other opportunities now that my lab has, has a nice solid footing in the areas where we're, we're familiar, uh, it's, it's a good time to begin to branch out. And so I think on every level, both from my lab through the department, um, and that's both on the research and the clinical side, I think there are really positive changes and really uh, things are moving in a terrific direction. All right. Well, I thank you so much. And I'm, I have to say it is exciting and really that date for the new building, um, is still scheduled for late 2022 or early 2023. It will be here before we know it. And um, in this, you know, we will be working uh, hopefully somewhat more normally before we know it as well. Right, but, right. Um, I know that you're part of an organization that's called WEN. Tell us about that and, and what that means to you. Sure. So Gwen is the Graduate Women in Engineering Network. That is an organization that um, I started, uh, I co-directed and co-founded with um, a colleague of mine in engineering, uh, Cheryl Bodnar. Um, and basically what it is, is uh, it's an organization that exists to support women in engineering uh, in graduate school. It's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, but the reason that it got started is because we, we took a look around and we realized that um, graduate students face a, a really significant number of challenges. You know, you are in this transition time in your life where you're, you're doing all of this work, you're taking classes, you're doing research. It's like having two full-time jobs. Um, and then on top of that, for the first time in their lives, you know, they have to pay some bills they've never had to pay before. Um, they're, they're gaining this level of independence as young adults that they've never had. Uh, they don't have the social network that you have as an undergraduate, and they don't have those campus resources that undergraduates have. And then on the, on the opposite end of the spectrum, postdocs, so one level above them, there's actually uh, a number of organizations that exist to support um, trainees at that level. But at the graduate level, we saw kind of a vacuum where there was nothing that existed. Uh, and so we sought to fill that, that void. And we created Gwen to support uh, women in graduate school who, who don't necessarily have a ton of role models around them uh, that can be able to answer questions about what it's like to, to be a woman in engineering. Uh, and the questions that they have were about work-life balance and, and you know why are there so few women in the upper echelons of, of academia and particularly in these administrative roles, you know, department chairs, um, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, even beyond department chairs, if you look at, you know, um, school-wide, why are there so few women uh, in these roles where it really matters? And so we, we spend a lot of time talking about those issues. We talk about other issues that are very relevant to women in engineering. Uh, we have a monthly book club. We meet very regularly for coffee. Um, but the greatest thing that we've been able to do is to connect mentors with mentees and to have these sessions where they're able to find uh, women who can serve as those role models, maybe outside their department, um, and understand that they, they are out there. It's just a matter of, of connecting those individuals. And so um, it's been really rewarding and it's led to other avenues for mentorship and for supporting women in science um, that I've really enjoyed. And it's, it's certainly a passion of mine to, to continue to support women who want to have careers in in academic research and in science and engineering in general. Thank you, that's terrific. 
uh, Morgan, Dr. Fedorchek, thank you for um, taking some time to, to do this and, and sharing this with anybody, again, who would be coming on through our website or, or the departments. And, um, and uh, it, again, it's always a pleasure. And uh, thank you for your time today. Yeah, thank you, Lonnie. I enjoyed it. All right, take care. Bye.